first one. We're going to be studying will for the first. We use will to speak about future, like I will go to Germany. Will is a modal verb just like can, so it's always combined with another verb. I will travel to Madrid. As you can see in this sentence, we need to use travel in its first form. The verb is always used without to. I will read a book. It doesn't change in the third person, like he, she, it subjects. For example, he will play tennis tomorrow, or she will be happy with her exam results, or it will rain soon. As you can see, even if we're using third person subjects, the verbs are always in their first form. In affirmative, positive sentences, this is how we use will. I will accept his offer. That's a positive sentence. You will take a bath. We will bring drinks for the party. Or they will break the windows. Also, here you can see that the verb is used always in their bare form, without to. Accept, take, bring and break, they are all in their first bare form. He will come to the match. She will cut her finger. It will destroy the forest. Destroy means air in water pollution or air pollution. Verbs are used in their bare form without to here, as you can see. Pollution means making something dirty or unclean. Negative sentences. If we're using will in negative sentences, it changes and will becomes will not. In short version, we're using them as want. For example, I won't dive into the ocean, or you won't do the test, or we won't dream about summer. With they, they won't drink tea in the garden. We use won't for the short form of will not, as you can see here. And also, you can see that the form of the verb doesn't change. They are all in there first form. Also, in negative sentences, won't or will not doesn't change when they are used with third person subjects. With I, you, we, they and he, she, it subjects. The verb always stays the same, which is in their first form. He won't fail in his math test or she won't feel bad or it won't fly high in the sky. As you can see, fail, feel and fly verbs are always in their first form, which is their bare form. Now questions. How do we make questions with models? To form a question using will, we reverse the order of subject and will. Let's take a look at the first sentence. Will I eat chicken? The positive form of this sentence is I will eat chicken. So what I do is taking will at the front of I and changing their places. I will come here and we will go to the beginning. Will I eat chicken? Will you enter the building? Will we feed the street cats? Or will they fry the potatoes? So as you can see, with all of the subjects, it's the same. We take will to the beginning of the sentence. And as you can see, the verbs are always in their first form. Now, questions with the third person. The rule doesn't change. I'm taking will to the beginning from right next to the subject. 
Now, the sentence was, he will give her flowers. So now, I'm taking will to the beginning of he. That's what I did to make it, to form a question in English. Will he give her flowers? Or will she hate this movie? Or will it have a home? To form a question using will, we reverse the order of subject and will. As you can see, the rule doesn't change. It applies for he, she, it in the same way. And also you see that the verbs are always in their first form. Now let's take a look at the short and long answers. If the questions start with a model will, the answers are given with yes or no. This rule applies for all of the questions in English. If a question starts with a helping verb or a model, the answers are always yes or no. Now let's take a look at the examples. Will they win the match? So there are two options, yes or no. The possible answers are yes, they will or no, they won't. I can go on these sentences as yes, they will win the match or no, they won't win the match. So these are four short answers. Will you tell him the truth? Since I'm asking with the subject you, the answer I'm giving is with the subject I. Yes, I will or no, I won't. Now, the usage. When do we use will? We use will after I think, I hope, I'm sure, I'm afraid. For example, I think we will pass the test. Or, I hope you will be excited. Or, I'm sure everything will be okay. Or, I'm afraid I won't leave the house. As you can see, with the words think, hope, I'm sure, or I'm afraid, I'm using will. Second usage, we use will when we decide to do something at the time of speaking. So, it's not a planned action. The phone rings. I will answer the phone. I'm giving this example at the time of speaking. I'm giving this answer at the time of speaking. It's not a planned action. When the phone rings, I'm going to say, I will answer the phone. And this is why I'm using will here. Do you know that James is having a party? Wow, that's great. I will go. Again, it's not a planned action, but it's decided at the time of speaking. Third usage of will. We use will to make a prediction about the future, but they are not based on a proof. This is just my idea. In 2054, we will live on other planets like Mars. This is my idea. It's not a planned action. I don't see any proof, but this is what I think. When I win the university exam, I will study in Oxford. I don't have a proof. No proof. This is what I think about the future. This is what I want to do in the future. So it's not, not a planned action. This is what I think. So the fourth usage when do we use will? We use will when we make a promise. I won't tell anyone, I promise. When I see this word, I always use will because it's not based on any proof and there is no plan. This is what I think, that's why what I promise on. I promise I will never lie to you. This is what I think about. This is not a planned action. When I see promise, I will always use, use will. Now, time expressions. What are the time expressions that we see for future? These might be tomorrow or this year 
or in two years time or in the next month or in five days or in 2050. These are definite time expressions that we use with will or all future tenses. For example, my tooth hurts. I will see my dentist tomorrow. This is what I decide to do and this is when I plan to do the action. We will have flying cars in 2050. This is not a planned action, but this is what I think. Time expressions for indefinite time. Indefinite time expressions are different from the definite time expressions. For this, we can use in the future, soon, in the near future, later, or sooner or later. These are indefinite time expressions that we use for future tenses. For example, I'm busy now, I'll see you later. Later is an indefinite time expression. The climate will get warmer in the future. In the future is an indefinite time expression. Also, we should note that in short version, we can use I'll just like this. I'll see you later. This gives me the idea that we're using will and future for our sentence. Now, next time expression that we're going to talk about is be going to. Be going to use is also being used for future. But the difference between be going to and will is that we use be going to when there is a planned action. This is how I differ will from be going to. The usage of be going to is we're using subjects be and going to. You know the form of be in present tense are am, is and are. That's why I need to use am, is, are depending on our subject. For example, I'm going to play chess with my friend. I am is used for B form. Going to is the rule. It's not the word to go. It's the rule that we use for future tense. So I will not get confused here. I'm going to play chess with my friend. I'm also using to and verb in its first form. She's going to visit her granny. Be going to and verb in its first form. We're going to have a party. Be going to verb in the first form. Now negative form. Subject to be negative, going to and verb. As you know, in negative we're using am not. For be we're using is not in negative and are not for negative form of be. And also these can be used as isn't or aren't. So let's take a look at the examples. You aren't going to meet him. We use you with the negative form going to and the verb in its first form. He isn't going to listen to music. Isn't negative going to is the form that we're using for future and listen in its first form. They aren't going to stay here. Aren't is negative since we're using they as a subject. Going to is our form of future and stay is the verb in its first or we, sh we shall say bare form. We use going to for future plans and intentions. For example, intentions. Trace is going to marry this afternoon. This is a planned action. That's why I'm using be going to here. They're going to become doctors soon. That means that they must be studying medicine right now. That's why I know that it's a planned action and they're going to become doctors. We use going to for predictions. For example, Rick studied really hard. 
His exam is going to be easy. Here I see the proof. I know that Rick studied really hard. That's why I know that it's going to be easy for him. Look at the clouds. It's going to rain. Here we see clouds. That's another proof. So I know that it's going to rain. When I have decided to do something, also I use be going to. First, I'm going to study hard. This is what I decided to do. Then I'm going to listen to music. This is what I planned. This is my plan and I'm going to do it. Later, I'm going to get ready for the party. So probably I prepared a timeline about what to do. And this is my plan. So I'm going to go along this way. Now, present continuous tense for future form. We all know that we're using pre present continuous for the actions that are happening at the moment. But also present continuous can be used for future tenses. So how is this happening? For example, if this is my plan, I'm using continuous. I'm seeing the dentist at 5. She is arriving tomorrow morning or we're leaving town tomorrow. If there is a personal plan, I'm using present continuous tense. You aren't spending Christmas with your family. This is your personal plan. That's why I'm using continuous. He isn't meeting Susan next Monday. Again, this is your personal plan, his personal plan. That's why I'm using present continuous. They aren't going anywhere tomorrow. This is their plan. This is their personal plan. So we're using present continuous for future here. Now, for questions, it's same rule applies for present continuous tense when they are used for future too. Are they getting married next month? I'm taking helping verb from here to the beginning of the sentence. So I'm reversing the subject with the helping verb again. Are we doing anything on Sunday morning? I mean, do we have a personal plan for Sunday morning? This is what I'm asking. What time is Mary leaving tomorrow? What is her plan of leaving? Now, in an arrangement, plan that you have decided and organized with another person. Also, I'm using present continuous tense. I'm visiting my cousin in Paris this weekend. This is our personal plan. He is picking me up at the airport. Again, this is his personal plan. Okay. Now, these are all for uh, future tenses, everyone. Thank you for listening to me. Stay at home, stay safe, and stay healthy. Love you guys, and also we miss you so much. Thank you.